Gute and welcome to this video, where I will show you how you set up locally running, so privacy aware, text to speech services in Home Assistant. And I'm not talking on this robotic voices. Hey, I'm what do you mean by that? I sound really good. Okay, sorry, do not get me wrong on that. You really sounded good if we had the year 1980. But in our days, there are quite a few better and more natural sounding voices available. I guess he meant a quality like mine. True, true. And how you set this up locally on your system, I will show you in this video. So let's go. So let's start by taking a look to Home Assistant's documentation in special to the TTS integration. I'll put the link in the description box below. And as you can see, out of the box, Home Assistant supports quite a few um, uh, text-to-speech services, such as Amazon Polly, Baidu, the Google Cloud Platform, Google Translate, text-to-speech, and uh, many more. But first of all, let's remove all TTS services that cannot be run offline, privacy, at uh, privacy aware at home. And as you can see now, we just have two or maybe two and a half services available because text-to-speech is not an actual TTS service. It's more like a meta service. So let's ignore this one. So we have just Mary TTS and we have Pico TTS or probably Pico TTS. So please let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, I will call it Pico TTS. So let's first of all, let's give Pico TTS as locally running TTS service a try in Home Assistant. So let's click here. Configuration is pretty simple. Just set TTS configuration to Pico TTS. By default, it will use an American English voice. But as you can see here, there are multiple voices available, such as um, DE for Deutsch, for German, Spanish, French, and Italian. So let's check this Pico TTS configuration. And for today's video, I have set up a Home Assistant containerized installation on my local system. So let's open this one with some demo entities. And in addition, let's open our configuration JAML file. So let's move it here and let's I'll put it here. So, okay. Uh, now you can see in the configuration jumble there's this block called TTS with that platform Pico TTS. It's written in the documentation. And if you click in the Home Assistant installation on the left navigation on media, you can test your text-to-speech service. So let's click text-to-speech. And as you can see, Pico TTS is configured. Let's click here and you can enter a test phrase such as the current temperature is very cold and hit the save button. The current temperature is very cold. Okay. Quality is not too bad, not too good. So uh, I guess uh, some way in the middle. And what's good is, at least in my testing, I did not install or it was not required to install Pico TTS myself. So it seems to be integrated natively in Home Assistant. But please correct me in the comments if I am wrong on that. So now let's give Mary TTS a try. For that, let's go back here and let's hit Mary TTS. Configuration the same way, just changing Pico TTS to Mary TTS. There are plenty of other configuration vari variables, <laughs> variables available. But let's stick with all the default values and just change to Mary TTS. Let's save it and reload our Home Assistant. But in this case, we have to install Mary TTS manually. So this is not delivered out of the box. We can try it without running or installing Mary TTS. So let's check media, text to speech. And as you can see now, this is configured to Mary TTS. Let's take the same phrase, hit say. And as expected, we are receiving an error because there's no Mary TTS server or service locally running. So let's hit OK. And uh, let's install Mary TTS. And again, I'll put the link to that in the description box below. For this test, I'm using the Mary TTS version uh, 5.1.2 because newer versions, I run into some Java exceptions. So I'm using this Mary TTS 5.1.2. So let's click the assets and just download the zip file.
once this is done, let's just unzip extract here directly in the downloads folder and let's open a command line terminal. Let's close this window. So I'm in my downloads directory with that extracted Mary TTS folder. And let's choose or let's switch into the bin directory. And here we have a Mary TTS server. So let's just run it from the command line like this. And it's starting up an HTTP server process. And now we should be able to synthesize audio in Home Assistant using this special locally running Mary TTS server. So let's check this one and hit say again. The current temperature is very cold. Okay, so first of all, it's working now as our server is running in the background. And what's really good on Home Assistant's capability to use and support Mary TTS service is that multiple text-to-speech services provide the same API interface, so the same application programming interface. So by the way that Home Assistant supports Mary TTS, all products that provide the same API as Mary TTS can be integrated in Home Assistant as TTS service, such as Mimic 3 or Larynx by the great Michael Hansen. Um, I will link a video on an audio comparison and how to integrate Mimic 3 in Home Assistant in the description box too. And by now, thanks to a guy called Florian, creator of the Sepia framework, Koki TTS supports now that Mary TTS API compatibility at least in a basic level, so no multi-speaker support at the moment, but you can use a single speaker Koki TTS model by using a locally running Koki TTS server. And based on this Mary TTS API compatibility, you can use every Koki TTS voice as your personal voice in Home Assistant, which is really amazing. So big shout out to you, Florian, for adding Mary TTS compatib compatibility to, <laughs> to Koki TTS. So let's see how this works. Obviously, you have to install Koki TTS in the latest release, at least at, at this point in time, 0.12 and choose your preferred voice and run a server process. So first of all, let's stop our Mary TTS process. So this is not required to run a Mary TTS server process itself. If you would like to use Koki TTS or Mimic 3 or Larynx um, API compatibility uh, service. So let's stop this one. Let's create a new folder such as Koki TTS. Let's go into that. TTS and let's create a Python virtual environment module vn dot activate this one and as you can see by pip list just the basic packages are installed so let's run pip install just in case do an upgrade on setup tools wheel and let's install TTS as the actual Koki TTS package. Once our Python virtual environment has been set up successfully, so let's check pip list again and we should have a longer list now including the TTS package in version 0 0.12 or higher depending on the time when you are watching this video. And um, now we can choose from a list of available TTS voices just by run TTS minus server minus minus list models and I will put a link to an audio sample comparison video of all Koki TTS models including their performance value. Uh, I will put a link to that in the description box and um, you can choose which TTS model you like most for your language <laughs> at least if there are multiple models available for your for your language. So I will use uh, an English model, obviously, LJ Speech, called uh, Wits Neon, which has a really nice compromise between performance and quality. So, and all we have to do now is running a TTS server process. So let's just copy this model with the number 14 in the clipboard. 
run tts minus server minus model underscore name, paste this model name there, run the server process. If you run this the first time, there will be a, a download of the model files. And once you see this message, your local Koki TTS web server is running on port 5002, including now that, thanks to Florian again, this basic Mary TTS API compatibility. So first of all, let's test it in our local browser and call localhost port 5002. And let's synthesize this is a test phrase. Speak. And as you can see, this is a test phrase. Okay, so synthesizing audio using the native Koki TTS web front is working already. So everything is ready to go. And now let's go back to the Home Assistant documentation for Mary TTS, because as you've seen, um, Koki TTS web server is running on port 5002. And by default, Mary TTS uses the port 59125. So we have to adjust the port at least in the configuration jumble file. So let's go to Mary TTS and enter our port 5002. Let's save. Let's stick with all the rest, the defaults. Um, let's reload our uh, Home Assistant configuration. So check configuration and restart. Yes. And now we should use that Mary TTS compatible API provided by Kogi TTS. So um, we can see or watch this with our TTS server in the background. So let's keep an eye on that. Go to media, text to speech. So it's still Mary TTS because that's the native module for Home Assistant. And let's stick with the current temperature is very cold. And if everything is working as expected, if we hit the save button, this should be synthesized by that Koki TTS server process in the background. So let's check this one, say. The current temperature is very cold. No, this is, uh, <laughs> okay, that's an issue. No, it's not, it, basically it's a feature because Home Assistant is caching. So to not synthesize identical audio every time. So let's do a small variation to um, skip that caching stuff is really cold. And now you can see the current temperature is really cold. So you can see that the Koki TTS server process answers this request. Let's give this another try. This locally running voice is sounding really good in Home Assistant. I mean, how cool is that? We have now the capability to use really high class, natural sounding, artificial voices in Home Assistant without the requirement to connect Home Assistant to the internet. Thanks to Koki, thanks to Home Assistant, Thanks to Florian for adding this feature of basic Mary TTS API compatibility. Of course, thanks to Michael, the voice Hansen, uh, for adding Mimic 3 and all the other voice enthusiasts for providing the capability to run high class voices offline. If you like that type of video, please do not forget, <laughs> please do not forget giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share this video, share my channel with other voice technology enthusiasts. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like, we might see us next time. Bye.